welcome back uh, today we are going to talk about temporal difference methods so let's remember let's recall what the temporal difference method was so um, the idea is I give a policy pi and I want to evaluate the policy and I want to compute some approximation j which is an approximation to j v pi which is the value function at pi so we had talked about temporal difference methods for the um, for the tabular case long time back I think in lecture 6th or 7th um, and the idea there was you define the temporal difference delta t as the reward plus the current estimate of the value function um, let me use jt of st plus 1 oh there should be a discount factor so let me put gamma as the discount factor minus jt of st and the td lambda algorithm was introduced which basically attempts to find fixed point of the following map t by lambda of j equals to summation m equals 0 to infinity lambda raised to m t pi raised to m plus 1 j uh, so this is the uh, definition of uh, t pi lambda j j so this is the operator t pi lambda is the operator this is the Bellman operator with policy pi this is the definition and uh, the idea in td lambda is to compute a fixed point which is t compute iteratively j star equals to t by lambda j star uh, and of course if lambda is equal to 1 if lambda is equal to 1 then we automatically get Oh, there should be a 1 minus lambda here I'll multiply it here 1 minus lambda so if lambda is equal to 1 then uh, um, this gives you then J star is exactly equal to V pi and if and as you reduce the value of lambda towards 0 your j star moves far away from v pi but nonetheless j star is a good approximation to v pi for large enough value of lambda so that was the idea in uh, td lambda this is something we talked about in um, I think in lecture 7 uh, that was for the <coughs> tabular case where the state space is finite and your jt so we studied it for the case where j is a function from s to r right so now we are of course going to use function approximation so we are going to approximate j using some um, uh, uh, parameter theta and then we would like to do the td learning with respect to theta which is we want to come up with compute the value of theta based on the samples rt st uh, sorry st rt and st plus one samples that we have received under the policy pi uh, there is also another topic which is off policy learning which we have alluded to several times so we will uh, see mathematically what exactly off policy learning means and how do you compute the uh, value function when the samples you receive is not from the target policy that you would like to evaluate so so in in temporal difference with function approximators um, the idea is to 
let v um, be a function of theta okay or j as a function of theta uh, and theta is the parameter Um, there are two types of uh, algorithms. So one is on policy, where st r t s t plus one generated according to um, according to the policy pi that you want to evaluate. The other is off policy. Where st rt st plus one is generated using policy pi b. Okay, and so definitely you want to um, the the so so let's think about an example in an engineering example. Let's say you have a large wind farm or a large electricity grid, and you don't want to do on policy learning because you may break something on the grid so you would like to do off policy which is we know currently whatever policy we are using to control the grid seems to be working fine so let's collect the state reward and the next state samples from the current strategy of the grid but then eventually we would like to understand how is the um, overall performance going to improve if we change the policy to some other policy pi um, and and that's exactly what the problem is uh, that we would like to understand, which is uh, come up with temporal difference methods with off policy, where uh, we are using a policy pi b, which is called a base policy or behavior policy, and we would like to inst compute the approximation um, of v pi, uh, but in the parameterized class of functions. Okay. So typically, um, so one one particular reference I would like you all to take a look at if you want to get a deeper understanding of temporal difference methods is this particular thesis by Hamid Reza Mei. Uh, it's an excellently written thesis, and uh, I think if you if you want to get a deeper understanding of temporal difference methods, you should definitely uh, read this thesis. Um, one thing I will note is a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talking about is actually taken from this thesis. Um, so it's really very, it, 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 the thesis has uh, summarized the entire field of temporal difference methods very well. Okay, so um, right, so let's move on to um, the 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 problem of temporal difference with function approximators so you want to i used uh, j of theta but uh, i need j as a function of theta later uh, let me not use j for representing the value function so v theta of s would represent the value function from now on and we need to come up with a training algorithm for theta for theta okay so whenever you want to come up with a training algorithm for theta you definitely want to pose an optimization problem with respect to theta and then use the samples to do some sort of stochastic gradient descent in order to compute the value of theta uh, this is exactly what um, we have been studying in most of the other algorithms, whether it was policy gradient or whether it was actor critic method. So temporal difference is just uh, um, no different from other um, algorithms that we have studied in terms of how they use samples to come to do the training for the optimal set of parameters. So what are the different objective functions you can pick for uh, temporal difference method. So one of the first um, um, method was proposed where you would ideally like to minimize the square difference between v pi, which is the 
uh, value function with policy pi minus v theta which is the value function with parameter theta um, of st so st here is the state and it's assume that st is distributed according to the invariant distribution mu so here pi will denote the policy and mu will denote the invariant distribution of state st under policy pi So that's what we want to minimize. Uh, of course, when you are talking about TD lambda, then this V pi gets replaced with the fixed point of this particular expression. <coughs> okay, so um, so so that's what we want to minimize. So I'll get to the uh, minimization. So so we'll get to the minimization part in the next slide. So maybe you can ignore this part. Uh, for the time being uh, and so how do you how do you do the minimization well you pick theta and then you do a stochastic gradient descent uh, with respect to theta based on the samples that you're receiving from the simulator or from the real world data now the other um, uh, objective function for theta could be that you actually want to minimize v theta minus t v theta, um, uh, and this norm is essentially expected value of v theta s minus t v theta. Uh, let me. How should I write it? Okay, so I'll write it. This is equal to expected value of v theta s minus t v theta s square and the of course s is distributed according to the invariant distribution mu under policy pi so this is called mean square bellman error um, estimate for theta or that's the objective function for theta and you would like to minimize this particular objective function um, so you do a gradient descent for this objective function. Okay, so how how is it different here? So see, this is uh, instead of t v theta in the mean square error, you are taking v pi as the minimization object uh, as the uh, second argument to this particular norm. Um, so 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 that's one possible objective the other op possible objective is you want to minimize the temporal difference error so you want to minimize expected value of delta t theta square again this expectation is remember delta t theta would be rt plus gamma v theta st plus 1 minus v of st v theta of st and you would like to minimize the square um, uh, square of this particular temporal difference so this is a scalar you want to minimize the square of it uh, assuming that st is again uh, distributed according to the invariant distribution mu so st is distributed according to mu okay uh, that's the third objective. The fourth objective is uh, called mean square projected Bellman error, where um, it's a very interesting uh, objective function. So you are taking v theta and then you're subtracting from it, not the t v theta, but the projection of t v theta onto the function space where you are, your v theta lies in. So this pi is the projection operator. Okay, so uh, so the idea is you you have this function space. Um, this is your uh, space of v theta. So this this particular line is the space of v theta. I pick v theta. I get t v theta. Now t v theta is outside of this particular space. So I project it back to the to the space, 
and I get pi of tv theta which is the projected value of the function tv theta onto the space which is um, your function approximation space and then you want to minimize the squared loss of this particular distance this is what you want to minimize now of course this is weighted according to mu because you have uh, you're using the invariant distribution of the state to um, weigh uh, how much the difference would uh, affect the overall error. So this is known as the uh, mean square projected Bellman error uh, objective and what we would see is in the coming pages what we are going to see is that the MSE if you want to minimize MSE theta it gives you the original TD lambda algorithm, uh, some approximation of uh, TD lambda algorithm. Rather, I should say TD lambda algorithm is an approximation of minimizing MSE theta. Uh, and it had some problems uh, and divergence issues. So therefore, uh, the, the author that I was talking about, Hamid Reza May, um, he, uh, in a series of papers, with his advisors and collaborators uh, showed that MSPBE is the right objective to minimize uh, because it has much better convergence property in comparison to MSE theta. So that's what we are going to study. So let's first talk about, so, so the, the takeaway point is you have multiple objectives uh, for minimizing theta. Um, you can pick MSE theta, you can pick MSBE theta, you can pick MSTD theta, or you could pick uh, this particular MSPBE uh, theta. And depending on the objective, you get completely different algorithms. And uh, so, so this is the op so. What do I want to say? Depending on the objective function over theta. Uh, you get completely different algorithms for stochastic gradient descent and um, you may have good convergence property, you may have bad convergence property. So if your algorithm has bad convergence property, you could potentially look into uh, a different objective function to begin with so that um, your overall convergence guarantee is much better and superior to other algorithms in the, in the area. So let's talk about TD lambda method. So TD lambda method wants to minimize, attempts to minimize MSE theta using stochastic gradient descent. So this is the MSE theta objective function. Um, if you look at the gradient, remember the gradient descent algorithm is theta t plus 1 equals to theta t minus beta t um, gradient of MSE theta t. Okay, so this is what you want to compute. So let's look at what is the minus gradient of MSE theta t. So what's the gradient minus gradient of MSE theta t? It is given by the expected value of v pi minus v theta old multiplied by the gradient of v theta at theta old. Okay, now we don't quite know what v pi is, right? Because that's what we want to estimate. So what do we do about it? Well, Let's let's guess that v pi s is given by this particular expression, which is the reward plus gamma, which is the discount factor multiplied by the v theta at st plus 1. Now, remember, this is a guess about the value at next state. So you're using the guess about the value at the next state to guess what the value of v pi at the current state is and then you use that estimate to um, to do the TD learning. So if, you, if I substitute this here what I get is this is equal to or rather I, it's not equal but it's approximately equal to expected value of RT plus 1 plus gamma v theta st plus 1 minus v theta st 
multiplied by gradient of theta v theta of s t. Okay, that's the that's the negative derivative of m s e theta. So that's equal. Oh, I shouldn't say again equal. They are approximately equal, where you are guess you are using the guess to come up with another guess. So it's it's a lot of approximation here. Now, how do you convert this to a stochastic gradient descent scheme? Well, um, I'm going to define this as delta t theta, or rather delta t. Well. Yeah, I'm going to define this as delta t. So this is all at theta t. Okay. Um, I'm going to define this as delta t, and the t d zero update would be that theta t plus one equals to theta t plus beta t, which is the step size or learning rate. Delta t, which is this particular parameter. and then gradient of v theta t st okay so whatever is inside this expectation because you don't know um you cannot compute the expectation so what you do is you pick this sample plug it in here and then you get the stochastic gradient descent update for the theta t okay so that's a td0 update in td lambda update you want to use some sort of eligibility trace uh, we have discussed this before in the context of Uh, T D lambda learning in uh, again going back to lecture seven or eight, and uh, and so 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 the goal here is that you want to use eligibility trace to update the value of the gradient um, in order to come up with a, a better estimate of theta t. So so this is what the overall algorithm would be. You have beta t, which is the step size, delta t, which is the error, temporal difference error. and zt which is the eligibility trace where delta t of course is the the um td error and zt is updated according to well this is not alpha but gamma gamma lambda zt minus 1 plus the gradient v theta gradient with respect to theta of v theta t s t now um this is where you note that if lambda is equal to 0 then you get exactly this update but if lambda is not 0 lambda is equal to is between 0 and 1 then you get this particular update so that's the td lambda update using eligibility trace so that gives you the vanilla td lambda update this update scheme was i think uh, proposed in certain 1988 paper Uh, which is uh, the first paper on temporal difference method uh and the convergence was not studied in the original paper in fact it was studied much later by a couple of uh, authors so the first paper written on the convergence of temporal difference method was by uh Sitsiklis and Ben Van Roy uh, written in 1997 and then a more general uh, algorithm was Uh, sorry more general convergence proof was given in this particular paper by tadic t a d i c uh, in 2001 and this is the the most general convergence result so this is coming from the first paper uh, on the convergence of td learning with linear function approximation so the goal here is you expect the value function you you sort of use a uh, parameterized set of functions phi um and uh, theta is the linear weight and uh, v theta is basically theta transpose phi of s where phi is a function from s to rd so you can think of phi of s as p1 of s to pd of s so that's the um uh, that's the parameterization and you then take a theta transpose and you want your value function to be within this class so of course phi is something that you need to pick um uh, beforehand before you start the td learning so it makes two assumptions first is of course the diminishing step size assumption that uh, your step size should converge to zero 
uh, sufficiently slowly. Uh, and then the second assumption is that the state should have a unique invariant probability measure mu under the, of course, under the current policy pi. Then in that case, you have this particular update scheme uh, using eligibility trace. Uh, remember, this is, uh, this was there in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, slide as well. It's the same, it's the same algorithm as this one. Then under the two assumptions, um, it turns out that your theta t would converge to the optimal theta star with probability 1. So that's the convergence proof. It's a pretty uh, sophisticated proof, so we won't cover it in the class. So I highly encourage you to read this paper if you're interested in knowing the proof for the convergence with linear function approximation. Okay. So convergence of TD lambda by 2001 was very well understood. However, there were many situations where um, TD lambda would not have a good convergence guarantee. So people needed to come up with a different algorithm which has better convergence guarantee in comparison to TD lambda. So Remember, we were talking about the mean square projected Bellman error, right? So this is uh, this is coming from the thesis. So remember, I was talking about a thesis by May. So he has a series of work on this uh, TD lambda method, where this is the objective function for uh, minimizing the for getting the uh, computing the value of theta. So, uh, so suppose, so l let's assume that right now we are con con using v theta of s as theta transpose v of s. Okay, then um, I can define uh, another matrix capital phi. So this is a matrix where I stack the entire phi one, which is a the first element of the function phi. So I'm in a finite state space setting, so I can stack it up as a matrix, and so I can stack up, uh, so I can stack phi1 as a vector, phi2 as a vector, and so on, phi d as a vector. Remember, each of this phi i is a function from s to r. So I can as well look at phi i as a vector in r s, okay? And I can stack them up to get a big matrix the phi, this capital phi. So this projection operator, because remember this is a linear subspace. So since this is a linear subspace, you are essentially trying to project a vector tv theta onto a linear subspace, and you want to minimize this uh, this uh, difference. So j of theta can equivalently be written as this expression. So delta theta is the temporal difference error at theta. Phi is, uh, this particular phi is, uh, is the function. So this phi is the same function as phi is a function from S to RD. Okay, so that's what uh, this expectation inverse and this expectation all of that means that we are using this phi as a function from s to rd only in the projection we are going to need this matrix but otherwise we don't need this matrix anywhere so sometimes you will see phi as a function from s to rd sometimes you will see an equivalent representation of this function in terms of this matrix so these two are completely equivalent don't get confused by the notation okay so now the goal is I want to minimize this j of theta using the samples from the simulator or from the real world data. So how do I do that? So well, again, I need to do uh, gradient descent. So theta t plus 1 equals to theta t minus beta t gradient of j at theta t. Okay, so now I need the negative of gradient of j at theta t. So Let's consider, uh, there are many equivalent uh, 
expressions for j of theta when my v of theta s is theta transpose phi. So you can compute it to be like this where w theta is the last two terms. So I am going to define these two terms as w theta. So this is expected value of phi phi transpose inverse expected multiplied by expected value of delta theta multiplied by phi. So I'm going to define this term as w of theta. And then this gives me uh, uh, an approach to do the stochastic gradient descent based on the sample. So one is I'm going to update theta k plus, oh, this is a two time scale system. So alpha k is the step size for theta k. beta k is the step size for w k. So now I have to train. Um, so this is this is a neat trick. Uh, let me get into it in a bit. So I just want to tell you what the two algorithms are based on two separate uh, expressions for gradient of j theta. So this is one way to write the gradient of j theta. This is another way of uh, writing the gradient of j theta. Uh, phi prime is phi prime equals to phi of st plus 1 and phi of course is phi as a, of a st. Okay, so so this is uh, one way to write the gradient. This is another way to write the gradient. So based on this gradient this is the update scheme for theta t where again alpha k is the step size for theta k um, and your w k is the step size for sorry beta k is the step size for w k. Now uh, in order to compute this gradient you need the value of w and you need the value of this expectation of course you cannot compute this so you have to estimate them from the sample so what you do is you pick a larger step size, larger value of step size beta k for w k and uh, in comparison to alpha k. So alpha k is small, say alpha k is 1 over k and beta k is 1 over k raised to 0 0.75. Okay, so you pick, you pick beta k which has a higher value in comparison to alpha k. Um, and this is known as two time scale learning um, because your WK converges faster because it has a higher step size. It converges faster in comparison to theta K. Um, now, uh, so this, this sort of time scale separation is pretty common and pretty standard in situations where you need to estimate two quantities in order to compute a gradient as is the case here. So first quantity you need to uh, you need to compute is this expression and the second quantity you need to compute is w of theta. So uh, let's let's see so let me show you how this uh, how this thing is computed okay uh, so, what is the expression for w theta? Let me not write it as w theta. So, w is phi phi transpose expected value inverse expected value of delta phi. Yeah. I'm going to rewrite this expression as expected value of delta phi equals to expected value of phi phi transpose inverse oh, sorry not inverse uh, multiplied by w which further implies that expected value of delta phi minus phi phi transpose w is equal to 0. Now one thing you will notice is phi transpose w um, 
expectation is actually a scalar and then delta is actually a scalar because delta is the error and phi is a function in from s to rd so phi s transpose so phi s is a vector in rd and then w is a vector in rd therefore phi s transpose w will be a scalar value and so the expectation of it will be scalar valued so now i can apply the stochastic approximation so lecture 8 i can apply stochastic approximation to update wk plus 1 as wk plus beta k and remember delta and phi transpose w are scalar so i can take it out phi transpose w multiplied by phi and uh, this is the update scheme this is exactly the update scheme for wk that we have here okay and now i can plug in the value of this wk in the stochastic update for theta k so this is phi minus gamma which is the discount factor phi prime which is phi evaluated at st plus 1 phi transpose and that gets multiplied by wk right here so this is phi k minus gamma phi k transpose uh, phi k prime which is phi evaluated at st plus 1 or sk plus 1 and then you have phi k transpose uh, wk let me write it somewhere here let me erase this part so phi k equals to phi of sk and phi k prime equals to phi of sk plus 1 okay so this is uh, known as two time scale stochastic approximation so both these algorithms are two time scale stochastic approximation algorithm um, and uh, the convergence follows from the usual um, approaches for stochastic approximation now of course the convergence for two time scale is slightly more complicated than a single time scale and we did the convergence proof for the single time scale stochastic approximation in lecture 8 uh, but the uh, the idea is similar uh, this algorithm is known as gtd2 algorithm and this algorithm is known as tdc algorithm okay and they both these both algorithms are written for value function that are linearly parameterized value functions okay now one of the cool ideas here is that um, you are you have come up with a uh, with a cool expression for the loss with respect to theta and at the optimal value function this loss will be minimized uh, so at, at v theta star this loss should be minimized now there is a natural extension of this particular algorithm to situations where v theta is a nonlinear function of theta. So that's what we will study next, which is GTD2 and TDC algorithms with nonlinear function approximators. And this is, of course, taken from May's 2009 paper. In order to understand this, uh, the algorithm, the temporal difference algorithms with nonlinear function approximator, let me draw. Let me go back to the linear function approximator and tell you what we were doing there. So this was the linear function approximating class of so theta transpose phi s. Uh, so for various values of theta, so this would be theta 1 transpose phi s. This would be theta 2 transpose phi s. Uh, well, I shouldn't write it as a function of s because it's a function space. <clears throat> so what we were doing is uh, let's say I'm sta standing at theta 1 transpose phi uh, I am going to pick tv theta project it back onto this function space okay and my error is the error that I'm trying to minimize is this particular error between theta 1 transpose phi and this uh, um, and this projection by t v theta 1 okay 
So this is the error I'm trying to minimize. So let's let's so so pi t v theta one is the projection of t v theta one onto this particular class of function. So let's try to do it for the nonlinear function case. So I am standing here at v theta. This is my t v theta. And I have to then project it back onto this nonlinear function space, and that seems to be a difficult problem because um, uh, because projecting onto a nonlinear potentially non-convex space is very very difficult. So one thing we could do is instead look at the tangent plane at v theta. So let me draw the tangent plane. This is the tangent plane at v theta. And instead of projecting it back onto the nonlinear function space, let me project it onto the onto this tangent plane. So the the expression for this tangent plane would be um, I don't want to call it v theta. So let me call this v theta theta tilde equals to v theta plus theta tilde transpose gradient of theta v theta. So that's the space of function that we are considering here. Uh, this where theta tilde is Rn, theta tilde is in Rd. Okay, that's this function space. Uh, let me call this f theta. <coughs> So now you are doing the projection pi theta of t v theta. You're projecting it onto the tangent plane and you are trying to minimize this particular error. And this is very simple because now you can use the, the algorithm we developed in the previous uh, section to do the minimization of this particular error in order to come up with a temporal difference method with a nonlinear function approximating class. And after going through the derivation in this paper, um, you get the following algorithm. So this is the update for WK. VK is V at SK. And, uh, and then in the update term for theta K, you will find two new terms. One is this term. So for the GTD term, you will have this minus HK and same thing for TDC, you will have a minus HK term. And this is uh, basically um, ex given by this expression. So now you need the second derivative of V at theta K, this derivative with respect to theta K, you need this second derivative in order to run the temporal difference method. So that potentially is a drawback because if you have a complicated function approximator like a neural network, you probably won't be able to uh, compute the second derivative. But nonetheless, this is the first algorithm that provably works for nonlinear function approximators as well. So as long as alpha k over beta k goes to zero, as k goes to infinity, there's two time scale algorithms. So either nonlinear GTD2 or nonlinear TDC, these algorithms would work and converts to the stationary point for uh, the objective function. And remember the objective function here is V theta minus pi theta T V theta. Um, and this is uh, weighted with respect to the measure mu, which is the invariant measure for the states under the policy pi. Okay, um, so that's the temporal difference method with nonlinear function approximator. This is also a two time scale algorithm because your beta k, uh, your w k is updated according to the learning rate beta k, whereas your theta k is updated according to the learning rate alpha k. And uh, the proof of this result also follows from the proof for two time scale stochastic approximation uh, convergence. So uh, the next topic I want to discuss is temporal difference with important sampling, which is an off-policy learning method. 
so once again the idea is that you're getting a you're getting samples from policy pi b but you want to understand the uh, the value function corresponding to pi which is the target policy okay so how do you do it well uh, uh, so this so as we have talked about uh, several times in this uh, course that you use what is known as important sampling to um, to do this uh, sort of computation so this would be your v pi approximation is approximately equal to this expression so remember mu should be the invariant distribution from this is the distribution of the state s under the sampling policy okay this is the target policy that you want to you want to compute the v pi for uh, this is the state transition function this is the temporal difference error and this is the um, the value function uh, once again my v theta here is theta transpose phi so that's the value function i'm using for the so i'm using linear function approximation here and then you go through some simple algebra so you divide it by pi b you multiply it by pi b and then you denote this by the importance weight rho t um, and this is the temporal difference error this is the uh, function phi uh, this is the usual transition probability the policy with which you are sampling and mu s is the distribution of the state so you see this rho t appearing here the delta t comes here the phi t which is phi of s t that is uh, appearing here and of course the rest of the thing is within the expectation and you use the samples of uh, coming from policy pi b to do compute this expectation approximately so that's the derivation of temporal difference with important sampling so the usual algorithm here would be you pick uh, no matter which algorithm you pick uh, when you are updating your eligibility trace zt plus 1 equals to zt no, alpha lambda zt plus now you have to multiply it by rho t which is the important sampling weight uh, into gradient of theta t v theta gradient with respect to theta of v theta t so this is not alpha this is gamma okay so this is the uh, this is the way you update the uh, the eligibility traces when you want to do off policy when you want to do off policy learning with uh, important sampling um, so that gives you the td lambda algorithm with with important sampling okay so now let's uh, talk a little bit about some of the extensions and open problems in this area so one of the easy extension for the td learning is uh, you use n step td learning so the way you compute the n step td learning is as follows remember that your error in the temporal difference is de defined as rt plus gamma which is the discount factor v theta t st plus 1 minus v theta t st so this is the uh, temporal difference error So 
The other idea you can use is you define your delta T as RT plus RT plus 1 plus RT plus 2 plus gamma raised to 3 V theta T ST plus 3 minus V theta T ST. Okay, so this is a three step TD error. Okay. So you can define the n step, the corresponding n step temporal difference error and use that to um, run any of the other TD lambda algorithms that we have studied. Uh, the benefit of this is that you weigh the guess. So remember this is a guess about the value at state st plus 3. So now you are weighing it much lower because this gamma raised to 3 is going to be very, very small in comparison to gamma. Okay, so the future errors or the errors in your guess will be discounted significantly if you use a multi-step TD learning. And this whole idea is known as bootstrapping. This bootstrapping is different from the bootstrapping of you've studied in machine learning or bootstrapping that I discussed when we were talking about function approximators. Uh, so that's the bootstrapping of statistics. This is the bootstrapping of temporal difference methods. Okay, so this this thing is known as this idea is known as bootstrapping, which is use n step temporal difference learning. So that's one extension um, that you can implement in any of your TD learning algorithms and see if the performance of your TD learning improves. The second uh, natural so the 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 open question right now in uh, in the field of temporal difference is uh, what is known as the deadly triad so if you are using a temporal difference learning method with function approximator n step td method which is the bootstrapping and if you are doing off policy learning so like i said you can run your algorithm but the issue is that the convergence is Convergence of such an algorithm is an open question and the uh, and coming up with better algorithms. So sometimes your algorithm would converge but uh, it doesn't give you good performance. So the question is are there better algorithms? For addressing the convergence. So that's an open question. If you want to know more about the open question, this is considered in great detail in chapter 11. Chapter 11 of Sutton and Bartow. RL book. This book is available online for free. Uh, you can look at the pre uh, I think it's a draft book. Uh, you can take a look at it, um, chapter 11 of it, to learn more about this particular deadly triad. So specifically, this, this whole issue is discussed in section 11.3 of the book. So, so that's all for now. With uh, uh, this, I end my reinforcement learning course. Uh, the last lecture is going to be about uh, some of the key ideas we have learned in the entire course and uh, hopefully that would help you uh, organize your thoughts about reinforcement learning and uh, help you in your future research endeavors.